The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me and sent me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who made the priest, St. Louis, an outstanding witness and teacher of total devotion to Christ, your Son, through the hands of his Blessed Mother, grant us that, following the same spiritual path, we may constantly spread your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders, and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the Righteous One, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he saw this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be a rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, 
Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. So we hear a couple allusions to God working through other people today in the readings. In the first one, we hear uh, Stephen, before his martyrdom, talking about how the law was transmitted by angels. Now this old, the old covenant uh, was transmitted by angels, and also that, that these prophets were sent to foretell the coming of the righteous one. And so the answer is, well, whose law is it and who sent the prophets? And the answer, of course, is God. And it's the same thing here. We hear Moses, uh, the Lord speaking about Moses, and Paul speaks of Moses as the mediator of the old covenant. And it was God working through Moses who gave that bread to the people. And even Moses himself, as the mediator of that old covenant, didn't work alone, but he had you know, Aaron with him and Miriam with him, and he gathered around him those 72 elders to adjudicate cases, and, and there was this whole system around it. And so when we talk of God being at work, or even of mediation, it's always in the context of God working through people. And I bring this up because the saint that we celebrate today, St. Louis de Montfort, uh, lived in the 17th and 18th century in Western France, passed away in 1716, and he's well known uh, for his, his beautiful exposition for devotion to the Virgin Mary of how just as God worked through Moses, just as God worked through the prophets, just as God worked through the angels, so too did and does God work through the intercession of the Virgin Mary. And he, he was in uh, the west of France, along the coast, uh, in an area that was known primarily, uh, primarily in an area known as uh, the Vendée. So after he passed away in, in 1716, as as you well know, in that same cent later in that same century in France, you had the French Revolution, uh, which was very much uh, driven by a, a desire to persecute the Catholic Church and to stamp out the Catholic Church in France. And the Vendée was noticeable for really holding the line. Uh, the, the priests there were very devout, the people there were very devout. And uh, as a result of that, when the Revolutionary Army came in, they were met by the people of the Vendée, who had a flag. They, against that, that French tri Enlightenment tricolor, they came out with a flag with two hearts on it, the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And the reason that they had the strength to do that was since the preaching of St. Louis, they had that devotion to the Virgin Mary. And when we look through history, a church history, any time the, the faith is under attack, any time that, that the people are under persecution, how often do we see Marian devotion coming to our aid? So we think there, right, of, of St. Louis' preaching of the Virgin Mary, giving the, the, the families of the Vendée that strength to defend the faith. We might think centuries earlier in France, when the Cathars were in southern France, uh, they, they started all these terrible wars and persecutions, and the Lord raised up St. Dominic, who preached the rosary, who preached devotion to the Virgin Mary. Right, and, and how often we've seen throughout history at, at, at people, at saints, with this devotion to the Virgin Mary, with this devotion to the rosary, uh, which is the bedrock of the faith. And, and St. Louis knew that. St. Louis lived it, loved it, and that's why he was able to preach it. And so when we look at, at our own culture, we look at our own families and we think, well, how do you stay Catholic in a culture like this? Uh, how, how, do you, how do families stay Catholic in a culture like this? And if you're like me, you have family members who, you know, are in various states of, of practicing the faith. And we can look to the example of uh, St. Louis de Montfort, which is devotion to Mary. Pray the rosary as a family together. Have, have, that, have your houses consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Instill that devotion to Mary in yourself. Instill it in your children, in your parents, in your neighbors, in your family. 
And nothing, nothing will be able to shake that away from us. It's through that full devotion to Christ through Mary, always to Christ through Mary, that St. Louis points out is, is the bedrock and the surest way to get to Christ for now and eternity. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We humbly implore your majesty, Almighty God, that just as the offerings made in honor of blessed Louis bear witness to the glory of divine power, so they may impart to us the effects of your salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, prepare us, we pray, for the eternal joys that, as a faithful steward, blessed Louis came to deserve. 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.